So the quality and the price that you pay at home depends not on what we grow, but on the industrial process at home, right? And they make from these cocoa beans white chocolate, black chocolate, or dark chocolate, or blue chocolate. It's exactly the same cocoa beans, right? And in tropical countries, what do we do? We grow the trees, we harvest the fruits, and we follow three basic steps. We make a fermentation in this corner, we dry the beans, we roast the beans, and we ship them. That's exactly how most part of tropical countries export the cocoa beans, roasted cocoa beans, or you can also dry the beans and export the powder that we call cocoa liquor. Those are the tropical steps. This is the first one that we call fermentation. Do you know what's a fermentation, right? Yes. It's exactly the same process that we use for beer, beer and wine also, right? Wine. Exactly. So first of all, why do we have to make a fermentation on the beans? Because any of these cocoa beans, it's a baby plant, right? If I plant this cocoa bean, what is going to happen? It grows. Exactly, right? If you want to make the best chocolate, you need to kill these baby plants. These embryos cannot live. They cannot grow. If they grow, they use all the substance inside the bean, and that changes the aroma and the taste of mm. the chocolate. That's why it's extremely important. This is the most important step to make high-quality chocolate, right? And let me tell you, it doesn't look very nice, but it's the most important step. What do we need? Cocoa beans. Banana leaves and flies, fruit flies, Drosophilus. You know fruit flies, right? Mm, yeah. Drosophila melagua. Exactly. Different species in the same genus. So how does it work? It's very simple. Take your machete, open the fruits, and drop the cocoa beans here with your fingers, and that's all what you have to do. Because remember that this whitish pole is kind of sweet, right? When you drop all the cocoa beans there, many tiny flies, fruit flies, land on the cocoa beans. And these flies transport in their feet yeast and bacteria. You know yeast, right? Mm -hmm. Yeast is this fungus that takes the sugar in the whitish pulp and produces ethanol. <coughs> and ethanol is a kind of alcohol, alcohol right? Alcohol. And this ethanol production is also produced at very high temperature that in five days kills the baby plant. The first day, the baby plants are very happy. They try to grow. It's hot and humid. Those are the perfect conditions. Second day, oops, very hot. Third day, very, very hot, and the fourth day, the temperature is so high that when you have many, and I mean many cocoa beans in a big container, and you put your hands inside, you get burned completely. Wow. The temperature is very high, the fourth day, where the embryo of the plant dies, and that's exactly what we're looking for. The last day, the last chemical reaction that changes the bitterness of the chocolate. We know that this fermentation process is done because the cocoa beans turn from pinkish color to dark brown, so we know that they are completely fermented. If you don't ferment the cocoa beans, the chocolate is of very low quality, right? This is the Costa Rican process, and how you would suppose this is only a demonstration, right? If you want to ferment cocoa beans in an industrial way, you need boxes about this big or even bigger, right? And by the way, in Africa, sometimes they use this for different kind of methods. One of the most popular methods in Africa is this one. They use banana leaves, they cut down many of the banana leaves they have, they spread the leaves on the ground, they take all the cocoa beans that they have and spread the beans on the top of the banana leaves. And all the workers in the cocoa plantations, what do they do? They just walk on the top of the cocoa beans because they don't wear any kind of shoes and they don't wash their feet for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So what do they have in their feet? Yes. So which one do you prefer, Costa Rica style? Costa Rica. Sure. Flies or people? Do you cover the do you cover the beans with the banana? Yeah. Actually, we use many. More banana leaves because in this way we try to keep, keep the, the heat constant. Exactly. For 